I can't listen to you while you blindly support and don't acknowledge negatives because I'll have a conversation with you about it, but I can't just be like, he's the best. You're an idiot to move on. What are you doing? That's fine. And the argument to be made for more draft capital. I love that. I started with that argument, but the more I, you know, really you work on draft capital so that you can get a quarterback eventually. More we draft did it so last can... year so we could be in the spot we're at today. <laughs> exactly. It's gambling with house money. Right. So, but if you ask any of these people who are just blindly defending Justin Fields and ask them to put together a list of their of the top five quarterbacks in NFL history, I would argue probably none of them are going to put Cam Newton, Michael Vick on there. You know, you're going to put Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, guys who could barely run, and they were still the best at the position. So the athleticism is so cool and it's so fun to watch, but it's not what's going to get you over the hump at this point. We're watching all these guys who are similar to builds to Justin Fields, and everybody keeps saying, well, if if you get lucky and Justin Fields works out, then you get Jalen Hurts, first round bounce out, right? If you get lucky, it's Josh Allen, gets beat by Patrick Mahomes every year. Maybe you'll have uh, Lamar Jackson, right? Bad play calling, all that stuff. Like, Lamar's not going to go out there and say, hey, play calling was bad. He he owns it. Like, he knows he played bad and he needs to be better. And these guys just keep consistently getting bounced. And the quarterbacks that we talk about that just play well within their system, get rid of the ball quickly, you know, make throws from the pocket. These are the guys that usually end up in the Super Bowl or in the NFC or AFC championships. You know, I can't I can't do those comparisons anymore. So so like to touch on the first thing you said, you know, we get those comments all the time saying, no, Fields is the guy. No, Fields, he is him. He is QB1, this and that. But why? The only argument that people make that's actually kind of valid is, well, the locker room loves him. He's a great leader, this and that. I agree. He he totally is. He's, he checks all the off the field stuff, in my opinion. He is a great character. He's got a hard work ethic. All of that is there. But it, that that stuff's not irreplaceable. And that stuff also, it, it's great. But somebody um, was arguing with me about, you're not going to take Caleb because of the character. He's a whiny little diva and he paints his nails and he cries or something or something or something. And I said, you know, I didn't realize we were in the business of drafting characters. In that case, we should be going after Tim Tebow. No, I want Aaron Rodgers cut his family off. He was a damn good quarterback. I mean, I don't care. You know what I mean? I really don't care if you're getting it done on the field. I really Aaron Rodgers don't. might be one of the worst people in the world. So, like, those two, yeah, I, I would love a great character and a good quarterback. But first, I want the product on the field to be solid. And as long as that guy can play quarterback, that's all I care about. Would you care if you had FGB painted on there? If he's throwing four touchdowns against the Packers? Fanboys, Bears fanboys would lose their minds. They'd be like, yeah, I like this guy. All right. He hates I, I said half the city would start painting their nails. Whatever scrutiny I've heard about Caleb, first off, doesn't seem to be on the field stuff. In fact, only on the field stuff that I have heard about him is that, okay, he does come from an air raid offense. He does play a little bit too much hero ball. Richie said it last time he was on with me that that stuff doesn't, you know, hero ball doesn't necessarily translate into the NFL, which is what we're seeing with Justin Fields, by the way. It, it just looks and feels a little bit different from Caleb, to be honest with you. It just seems like he's way more in control rather than it just looking like it's sloppy. There are differences in the hero ball that you're trying to like, so maybe I can help you out in the explanation of it because I've watched a lot of Caleb Williams lately is there's hero ball where you're scrambling with really no goal in mind. Whereas like there's an extension of a play hero ball style, Ben Roethlisberger, right? Where you, you move Rodgers, down the line right? of scrimmage or Aaron Rodgers, where you loop, move down the line of scrimmage, you know where you want to go with that ball. And if it's not there, you throw it away, but you're probably going to be successful out of pure talent. That's the difference is when I watch Caleb Williams, he's not extending the play for almost just to keep the play alive and hope a miracle happens. The guy has a plan. He's moving down the line of scrimmage. He's directing traffic. He's knows if that's not open, nobody else is going to get it. And that's, that's what the NFL is, man. It almost seems like he prefers to attack the third level. Like, so when he drops back and sees what the safeties are doing, he's just like, Oh man, let me roll out and just kill you back to Justin Fields. We talked about at the beginning of the year, we'd be happy with, multiple 300 yard passing games from Justin Fields. Right. And we got one, we finally got the first one of his career. Um, 
the only one of his career. So I started thinking, you know what? Uh, okay, beyond just 300 yard passing games, because a lot of people then comment, oh, well, you know, that's that's not all that's important. This and then it's true. Rushing yards are important as well, even though I've kind of made the argument that Fields kind of takes away from the running backs when he takes those rushes because they're not always scrambles, they're designed runs. Regardless, I started looking through, and I know I gave you this information. I started looking through at total yards. Like, how many total yards per game does Justin Fields give you? And, like, this year, game one, 275. Game two, 214. Game three, 146. That's total yards. That's pass plus rush. Want to know why we went 0-3? It wasn't until the Broncos game where he finally put it together and had 335 passing yards and 25 rushing yards, 360. And then against Washington, he had 339 total, right? Vikings, he got hurt. We're not going to count that. When he came back in, 273, 276, 281, 196, 267, 313 total, and then 175 to end the year. Meanwhile, a guy like Jake Browning had three 300-yard games this year, one for 275. It's frustrating because this is total yardage, right? And, like, the year before that was worse. I mean, the year before that, in 2022, Justin Fields in his second week had 90 total yards. You know, in week 15 in 2022, he had 130 total yards. And, and you, dude, week three, he had 153 total yards. You could get a lot of different quarterbacks to get those kind of yards just by throwing the ball without even running it, right? And so when we sit there and start comparing him now, we've done this. We're guilty of it, that we sat there and said, hey, we compared him to Lamar. But our comparison was very short, you know what I mean? Other than just a couple of physical attributes, that's where it ends. Because Lamar's Lamar's a good quarterback. And so at least we didn't entertain it too far, but we did even entertain it. You know, I'm starting to get to a point where I, I'm not even willing to do that. Because let's start with Michael Vick. Michael Vick in his second season threw for th almost 3,000 yards. Had 800 yards rushing, nine fumbles, eight interceptions right? 16 touchdowns. So like Justin Fields in his second season had 2,250 yards, 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He rushed for that 1143 with eight touchdowns, but he also had 16 fumbles. This year, he threw for 25, 62, nine interceptions, 16 touchdowns, 657 yards, four touchdowns rushing, and 10 fumbles still. So I'm not even willing to say he's better than Michael Vick. Because he's not compare him to a guy like Josh Allen, just based off quarterback style. Compare him, to, it's not fair. We're we're really downplaying Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Then I really wanted him to take the sleep. I really did. I really wanted him to show me a lot more than he did. But because he didn't, this is where we're at. A lot of people say, okay, well, it's because of the coaching, because of this, because of, okay, whatever your reasoning is, this is where we're at though. And I just don't understand how what we have here with him is like why would you pass up on a choice of quarterbacks this year beyond that the number one choice happens to be touted as a generational talent and you can see it when you watch why would you pass that up for what you have with justin fields in the last two years justin fields is the second most sacked quarterback 99 sacks in the last two years I, I'm struggling to see if he will even survive. So if it does click in his head, you guys understand that those hits add up. Those injuries add up. People really don't like Caleb Williams being drafted because it's almost like an unknown commodity, right? And as if it's, oh, well, this guy could bust. Well, they keep acting as if Justin Fields is the known commodity. If this is the known commodity, and even if he gets 10% better, you're still dealing with a bottom, maybe 20th best quarterback in the league. So you're you're hoping for a now year four leap with a brand new coordinator, with hopefully brand new pieces, brand new receivers. And then where do the excuses end? Well, now he needs to gel with those pieces. Well, now he needs another year with this coordinator. People acting like Justin Fields is the known commodity is to me the, the kind of delusional part. Justin Fields is just as risky, if not more risky, than taking a new quarterback right at this point.